Hello and welcome to Transmitting Until Robots Replace Us. My name is Drew, call sign AC3DS. And my name is Benjamin, call sign KC3RPH. And we're going to show you how to make that antenna mast. So we needed an antenna mast because Benjamin and his sisters got their licenses recently. And it was just time for, of course, you know, more antenna. Um, and so we, uh, we wanted to put up an antenna mast because they're... Is a lot of there are a lot of different designs of antennas that we were considering, and we just needed something that was a little bit more flexible than a permanent fixed antenna. Uh, we wanted something that would allow us to be able to take it down, uh, make some adjustments, put up a new antenna, do some testing, uh, you know, calibration, really fine tune some different designs that we we've got ideas for. Um, and so that's what this was. Uh, now, actually, Benjamin came up with the design for it. We manufactured it together, but it, this is his idea. Uh, and the essential essence of it is that it's a tracked uh, design. It's an interior pole and an exterior pole um, with then a, uh, a latching mechanism of sorts. Um, and so we're going to show you what we did and how we did it. So, yeah, any other words? No. All right, let's get to it. I could start with a visual of the final product. However, I'd really rather start from the beginning. And for us, that meant drawing a line down the length of the 15 foot steel pole to indicate where we were going to need to carve out or grind out a channel uh, for the inset uh, platform running. Grinding took a considerable amount of time. Uh, and it was because it's a 15 foot pole and we needed to grind a channel into it that started at the top and worked its way down to about four feet from the base. So that's an 11 foot long uh, groove that we had to cut into this. Um, and now that 11 foot groove started with a 1 16th inch cutoff wheel. And then progressively we eventually, you know, we, we had to widen it out. Um, but it started with that 1 16th inch, and uh, it again, it took us probably about, maybe about two hours or so to get the full 11 feet the way that we wanted it to be. Um, and then once we had the initial channel cut into it, um, then we pro proceeded to use a wider uh, grinding wheel to uh, expand that opening a bit and so here that's what I'm doing right now expanding it as I was expanding it Benjamin had the good idea to use a hammer and chisel to actually pry it open and, and widen it that way um, and we, we gave it a try and it worked beautifully um, so we actually never even finished fully widening it via the extra grinding method um, and it, it, I, ultimately, it worked beautifully by just prying it open using the hammer and the chisel uh, and a little bit of leverage action. Um, so here Benjamin is just testing it to see if the uh, 1 8 inch uh, steel, uh, mild steel that we're going to be using as the support structure for our base would work. Uh, so now I'm grinding away at the uh, channel inside of the round insert. Now this round insert is going to go inside of that tube that you just saw. And the, the grinding that I'm doing right now is to fit that middle bar right there into it. And you'll see in a few minutes that how this all comes together. Uh, but once we had that formed, I had to, to weld it together. Um, and the welding went fairly well here. Uh, which meant that we could then transition back to creating the extra channels. Uh, and now these channels are what really allows the, the antenna to stay put once it gets up in the air, right? The, the mast section uh, that is moving, right, to, to go up, at, or the platform section that's moving to go up to the top of the mast and then pivot to the right a bit or pivot clockwise a bit and then you know, drop down into an additional uh, cutoff section. For mounting it to the house, we used uh, these brackets that we were able to find at Lowe's, uh, and we were able to weld these brackets onto the metal pipe. Uh, however, we needed to do some cleaning of the metal before we could do that welding. Here we have holes being drilled for the U-bolts that will eventually hold the antenna onto the platform that slides up and down the mast.
Let's take a quick look at what the final product looks like. Let's take a closer look at the build. We start with a bracket at the base that will keep the pole away from the house, but also secure it to the house. Then we work our way up to the channel and the platform that's going to hold the antenna. The platform starts with a, an eye bolt uh, braced to the bottom. Now that eye bolt is going to allow us to move the platform up and down the length of the pole. At the center of the platform, we have two U-bolts that are going to actually hold the PVC of the antenna uh, to the platform. So that will brace it to the platform. Um, and then the platform itself just has a bottom lip that will allow the PVC to sit against the bottom. Now, as we run up the channel, you'll notice that the channel is now coated with a rubber uh, seal that will help to prevent, you know, water from directly coming in or air, you know, wind directly coming into it just to keep debris out maybe. And then we have the two top channels that will allow it to slide in. So let's see how this actually plays out. So here I'm moving the platform up the length of the pole. And when we get to the top, it's going to need to be rotated and then it will slide back down into place and just gravity helps to hold it there. Um, you know, the gravity and, and the weight of the platform. Installation began with making sure that the mast was level or plumb. And we did this using just a regular basic level. Then we went ahead and mounted it to the side of the house using a few screws. And in retrospect, I wish I had been paying attention because I had the mast resting directly against the roof of the house. And, uh, you know, I'd really rather it had been off of the roof by a few inches and maybe had a platform underneath of it. I just, just wasn't thinking about it. Uh, and then we installed the screws for the second support and it was up and that was it. Now came time for the test to see if we could get it to come down. And so here I am using a 10 foot piece of three quarter inch PVC with a, an S hook at the end of it and I'm just turning it and then pulling it down. And gravity is helping it along to come down, which is fine. We're gonna be paying attention to the orientation of the antennas because of the proximity to the house. But once it's you know close enough, I can go ahead and pull it down. And that was it. It worked. So we were pretty excited. It was, uh, it was a good moment to see it all up and working. Thank you for joining us. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions or comments, make sure to put them down below. Yep, leave them down in the comments section. And of course, feel free to like, subscribe, share. Um, we appreciate all of that. It helps us out tremendously to know that this content is worth producing. Uh, so please, uh, please do that. And we'll see you next time. Until then. Bye.